Hi everybody, it's Eva coming to you live on Facebook from the Pleasure Tour. So I learned something really valuable yesterday and I'll say maybe I didn't learn it but I was reminded of it to only do things that come from a deep well and commitment to pleasure in my body. And so I decided I'm only going to do Facebook lives when I fucking feel like it. And today I definitely feel like it. I've made my way on the tour up to stay with my dear, dear friend, mentor, and sister, Deborah Juicy. If you don't know who Deborah Juicy is, wow. What can I say about Deborah Juicy? Um, only what I experience of her, and that is she is a multi dimensional, multi layered, multi level queen of an empire. Deborah founded and executively produced the Health and Harmony Festival for 25 years. 33 years. 33 years. 25 years with 25 hats on my head. <laughs> and 33 years in collaboration majorly with community. So if you're familiar with the Harmony Festival in Northern California, Deborah is the mistress behind the whole thing and such an incredibly powerful woman. Um, the way that we met is pretty <clears throat> magical also. For a number of years, people kept telling me, Oh my God, you have to meet Deborah Juicy. You look exactly like her. You two could be sisters. You're like soul twins. And finally, one day at a conference, this beautiful woman walks up to me and says, are you Eva Clay? I said, yes. And she said, I'm Deborah Juicy. And everyone keeps telling me that I need to meet you. And from that moment forward, it's just been um, a deepening of our relationship. And she's taught me so much. And it really is like looking in a kind of soul mirror when we're together. So number one, I just want to emphasize how important it is for all of us to have mentors and especially as women who are in positions of power because we have fewer examples to live by. And Deborah's been an amazing example for me. I want to grow up and be exactly like her, basically. <laughs> but you are. You I'm are. <laughs> and we are very much alike in our missions and what we value and what we want to create. So that's why we can support each other and we're soul sisters. And that's what we recognized when people kept telling us we looked alike. And it's not so much that we look alike, but our essences and who we are are alike. And in that way, we're soul sisters. We're connected in a soul path. Yeah. And so that's why we're here to help each other. And it's not all one way. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, she graces me to stay at her place whenever I come to L.A. And she nourishes my soul as much as I nourish her. Mm. So it's a two-way street like it always is. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so honored. I'm so honored. Um, so <clears throat> the thing I want to share with you today on the Pleasure Tour is um, when I first met Deborah, I was so stressed out and incredibly busy. I was working full time running <clears throat> community clinics for women. I was producing large scale ecstatic dance events. I had a private practice as a psychotherapist working with sexuality and relationships and, 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 and I had kind of taken on the world and I was so exhausted. I didn't know anything about pleasure, really. I was just living in a masculine mode of being, living from my intellect and my brain mostly. And I was on the verge of a mental breakdown, seriously. And I met Deborah, and I just saw her as such a successful and embodied woman. And I said, Deborah, how do you do it? How do you, as a single woman, at the time she was single and so was I, as a single woman, how do you pull it off? How do you get the support that you need and the nourishment and the affection and the love and the cheerleading? Because we can't do it alone. And I knew that at the time, but I didn't know what else to do. So Deborah shared with me how she manages this incredible empire as a single woman. And I wanted her to share that with you today, hopefully as inspiration. So Deborah, how do you do it? Well, to um, be alone is a misnomer for the human condition. If you look at sure. other cultures, they live in tribes. Right. The, community, the human reality is to live in tribes. So you have a support system. You have people you're deeply related to. You have deeply, you do, deeply, people you deeply do life with. And you evolve with that tribe. And we, the same thing is happening for us now, except for it's a different world. Our tribe is all over. Or maybe they're close by. But the beauty of the internet, we can communicate. Beautifully of cell phone, we can communicate. But the point is to identify your tribe, 
right. empower your tribe and really bring your tribe into your life and make them a part of your life. And the first step is recognizing your tribe. So first of all, you have a soul tribe, and that is the larger tribe that you incarnate with. We can connect because we're part of the progressive spiritual community. We're part of the dance community. Mm -hmm. We're part of the community that wants to make the world a better place. We're, we're part of that community that wants to live life full on, so we can Definitely. relate in that. <laughs> and there are people that also live by those values. It may not be people in... Um, you know, Southern Baptist countries, um, states and that, but there are people in our world. And you can start to recognize your soul tribe, the largest soul tribe that you belong to. Definitely. Pause for just a second, because I want to <clears throat> interject. If this is ringing true for you at all, if you feel like you need a tribe, whether you have one or not, if you feel like tribe is important to you, give us a like or a love, a heart, and just let us know that you're out there and that you're on this page. I know, I am so down with this idea. We cannot be without a tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so please go on. And um, this is actually souls that you incarnate with a lot of times at the same time if you go multi-lives. And you come with a common purpose, a common goal, a common value. And if you really look at your life, you can identify those groups of people that you feel really connected with, that you might go into co-collaborative co-collaborative relationship and create things with or you might see them at a certain festival that really aligns with who you are and what your values are and you go there's my tribe and so that's the bigger picture of the tribe is the groups of people that we align with that we come into that have the same value and then you have your soul family and those are members of the tribe that you have direct soul contracts with that you are direct relationship with they come into your life at different times for you to assist each other, for you to teach each other, mm -hmm. for you to just give each other big fat lessons, <laughs> for, for you to journey in whatever Definitely. your next cycle is. So you can even see it as before you come into this life, you write up your order of what you want to accomplish in this life and what you want to learn and what you want to achieve. And you make an agreement with this um, man to come into your life and be there during this time, and you're going to co-collaborate, you're going to teach each other. Drive each other crazy! And ah! you're going to evolve <laughs> to too. this level, and then maybe your soul contract is up, and then you part your ways. Or maybe it extends for a long time. Maybe you have a child together, or maybe you create a business together. Now, this concept of soul contract goes way beyond our traditional model of having the one man. This is really recognizing deep relationships and many, many other variations in your life and empowering and recognizing those. So <clears throat> when I separated from my last king, which I call in my court, the queen's court, every woman is a queen. Okay, hold on, pause for a second. Yeah. So I, this is the part, I mean, I want, <clears throat> you, want you to take away all of this, but this is really, really valuable because Deborah's about to drop a bomb on your consciousness and give you the map of how to create your own queendom. So again, we are all queens, and we are here to create our queendom, to live out our divine mission of what we came here to do, and we need a court to help us do that. Mm -hmm. Because the queen can't do everything in her own empire on her own. She needs people around her to help her, and she totally empowers and supports all those people in her court. It's a win-win all around. So when I separated from my ex-husband, I saw all these people in my community that I loved and I felt connected with, but I didn't really spend time with because I was so busy just being a partner to my ex-husband. And We had great relationships, but I thought, I want to make time to drop into all these people and see who they are. And first of all, I need some other men around me in my court, not a relationship. I just did that. I need a, some space. I want someone to empower me, to protect me, to take me places, to have fun together. Mm -hmm. I think I need some nights. Mm -hmm. How many of you women can relate <clears throat> to that? You know, if we're single, and maybe we're dating and maybe we're not, but we need the presence of the masculine in our, in our lives. I know I start to get really hungry just for my brothers, for male companionship a lot. So if you can relate, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments and chime in. And the night doesn't have to have a long, oh, you have to be perfect to fit into my world, which is a lot of misnomers that we try to, 
that we have in our culture. A knight can be someone that just shows up for you and you have that soul bond and you have a connection and you have something that really works for you and he's a support system and he's a knight. He's a, a you know, brilliant, powerful being and you empower him. So you, you in your court, I just want to make sure mm -hmm. we're understanding. So in your, you imagine your life as a court and you appoint people to different positions within the court. I tune in right. on a soul level and feel like, what is my soul contract with these men that keep showing up and love me and honor me, but we're not really going to go into relationship. And we okay. play together and they're there for me. And if I need something, I call them. Let me define that relationship and really empower it. Yeah. So I call those men my knights. And yes, yeah. I go to them and this is what I did. And I said, I would like you to be a knight in my court and this is what it means and would you like to be and then I will knight them. <laughs> so I decided I wanted you know a dozen knights in my queendom. I haven't filled all those positions but I've identified the men that show up for me at that level and they don't mm -hmm. want to be my full-on partner. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be there so that's not our contract. Right. But it's to love and support each other. Maybe go on a trip. When I took one of my knights we went to Thailand for three weeks and it was fabulous. And um, then later he came and met one of my girlfriends and they're together. But still, we had that time together and he's my knight forever. Mm, that's so beautiful, Deborah. I have to say, when she told me this, that um, in a queendom we need knights, <coughs> we also need princes, which are younger men that we mentor, that we have princesses, younger women that we mentor, and that we also have queens who are women at our level that we consider our sisters. That we co-collaborate co with. Uh, that we co- that we co-create and collaborate and, and everything with. And so when she told me this, it was like a bomb went off in my head. And I began to actually create my queendom and to structure my life in this way. And I have formally asked women to be my queens with me and to create community together. And I created my nights. So there are a group of men that I have asked them to be my knight. Um, hi, Nafisa. <laughs> um, this, is, this is my last <laughs> friend I was just with. Um, and it's amazing how men love to be knighted. They love to be given a role and a definition, and they love to come to my rescue. And um, I kind of have taken it maybe a step further than you. Like I took the idea and Yay. I ran with it. And like I have knights with very special titles. <laughs> so I have a tech knight. Actually, I have a couple of tech knights, like you have a tech mm -hmm. queen, because um, tech is something I'm lost with. Um, I have escort knights, like if I need a date someplace or I just don't want to be alone. I have snuggle knights that will just come over and hold me when I need it. I have knights that confront me, you know, that call me on my ship. Hopefully all of them feel empowered to do that. So um, I give my really specific titles. Yay. Yeah. And they love it. And we go through a, an official knighting ceremony. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you can take this idea and really make it your own. And um, men, you know, I would say the same is true for you. I know that there are a lot of men watching as well to create your kingdom. And men need the presence of the feminine just as much. And I feel like I probably show up as a queen to many of my male friends and you know there's one question I have for you and I remember asking you this years ago when I first heard about this idea I said well what's in it for them like what do the knights get why would somebody want to be your knight because they get all the benefits of my queendom I totally empower them with love and resources and they're on my team so um, it's a win-win on every single relationship. It's not a one-way thing at all. They give, you give, and you both benefit. It's win-win-win. So, and the men really love, like you said, they love to serve. They mm -hmm. came here to serve the feminine. Mm -hmm. And when they can feel like they can serve the feminine in just a direct way and watch you grow and flower and become who you are, they love that. That empowers them. That furthers their mission. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So... I want to invite you to enter what you think about this in the comments and let's get a conversation going. Uh, one thing that uh, I really want to change in the world is that this belief of that we have to do it alone and this belief that we are separate beings because 
we need tribe, we need community, we need connection in order to really get anything done pleasurably. And I know my pleasure, my queens, my knights, my princesses, everything, bring me so much joy and I never really feel alone because of it. So I'm so grateful to you, Can I share one more yeah, thing? Yeah, please. So people might be asking, well, where do I find my tribe? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, where and do you find your tribe? They are really in your lives. And it, if you take some initiative and invite those people more into your lives, which is what I did, then you will bond the relationship. And the more you empower it, the stronger it becomes a net around your reality. So you take the initiative and just tune in and say, wow, that person, I really feel connected with them. We've always had this bond. I haven't made time for them at all. I'm going to drop in and see where our soul contract is and see where we can strengthen it and see what we're there to share. So you can slowly build your soul family around you really easily. Mm -hmm. Thank you, because I, I think the operative word that I just heard in your share is build. So having a community and having your queendom or your kingdom is a verb, and we have to cultivate it, right? Mm -hmm. We have to reach out for it. So I know that all of you who are watching have friends, and you have people that you connect with immediately. I know, like how Deborah and I just connected, it was like, like many past lives together. And um, so we often feel that instant connection, but we have to curate it. We have to actually contribute to it. And um, I've done this with a couple of girlfriends, so I want to give you this idea, and you can sort of make it your own. Um, I've approached women and just said, I'd like to be your friend. Would you care to go to tea? Mm -hmm. Or would you like to have a conversation? I, I really love the way you are and I feel a connection or I love what you're doing in the world and I'd like to know you better and just make it as direct as that yeah I think everybody wants that right we all want to feel membership and belonging yeah so Deborah any parting words of wisdom oh I know I forgot to ask you what is your pleasure practice taking care of myself because I'm a not work hard, play hard. I'm a full-on expressive person in my business life and in my personal life. And that means also taking care of myself. So it's getting massages, mm. it's dancing, spending mm -hmm. quality time with the people I love, and really just nurturing and taking care of myself mm -hmm. on a deep, deep level. Mm -hmm. And it's non-negotiable anymore. As you get older, it's really important. If you don't, take care of yourself on all levels, you will start to get old. And that's not necessary. If you keep yeah. <laughs> running the good juju, having fun, having bliss in your life, you keep vitalized and keep healthy. So that's a daily practice for me. Mm, I love it. Yeah, I got an emergency massage yesterday. <laughs> like, stop, <laughs> drop, and massage. <laughs> that's what I do. And by the way, we are coming to you live from Deborah's bedroom, which I wish you could see the whole thing because it's just so mm. ah, delicious and feminine and sensual and yummy i think we all need to be living this way it's a temple it's a temple for mm -hmm. sure yeah okay so if you'd like to follow along um which i hope you do on the pleasure <clears throat> tour we have a long way to go it's going to be so much fun and it's, it's like keeps ramping up actually it's getting deeper and more interesting every day that i do this you can get more information at evaclay.com that's e-v-a-c-l-a-y.com and they can actually download a brochure that Please tells Please tell them where you can find Deborah. Yeah, at more, there's much more about the Soul Tribe Info that you can go into. And so you could go to soultribeinfo.com and you can download a brochure that explains much more about what I'm sharing about. Yeah, so we'll put that in the post and in the comments so that if you're watching the replay of this, just look at the post and these links will be there for you to click on. Clickety-click. Cool. Okay, well, okay. thanks so much um, for tuning into the Pleasure Tour. Um, keep watching, and we're going to keep going deeper and deeper into what it means to be a woman in your pleasure in the world. Okay, I love you so much. Bye.